Are Willie and Pros is the best approach for writers who are just starting out or facing blockage when it comes to producing work? If you are the one who is starting out, you'll improve more with it as a foundation for your writing than you ever will with the opposite end of the spectrum, literary prose. Or William prose is based around simplicity. As George Orwell best stated, good prose should be transparent, like a window pane. Or, in other words, good prose doesn't draw attention to itself. Everything is clear, and the reader can focus on what's going on in the story. Literary prose is the opposite. It's a stained glass window, flowery and ornate. It colors the story and draws attention to itself. I've got four reasons why writers should embrace Orwellian prose over literary prose. I doubt some of these will win popularity contests, but the logic is sound. Hear me out. The first reason goes to the fact that prose is just one piece of the greater craft of storytelling. Storytelling can be broken down to eight crafts. The big idea, narrative, genre, the story outline, characterization, world building, scene construction, and prose. There is so much to learn and juggle that it's easy to get overwhelmed if you aren't simplifying. You don't want to bite off too much at once, but you do want to be writing. Besides, if you're going to simplify anywhere, prose is one of the best places to. It doesn't matter as much as other crafts. This brings us to reason number two. Beautiful writing doesn't matter as much as some might make it seem. Story Genius puts it best when it tackles the myth of great writing. It discusses Fifty Shades of Grey and the frank reality that it sold over a hundred million copies despite it being poorly written. Now, I'd argue that marketing and some other factors had a great deal to do with that, but I'm a pragmatist first and foremost. I don't deny reality or success just because it doesn't align with my tastes. If you want a less controversial example, let's look at Brandon Sanderson. He doesn't worry about beautiful writing. He aims for a William prose. In fact, he's the one I learned this from. There are plenty of booktubers or so on who will dismiss his prose. He himself even does. But you know what we can't dismiss? His bibliology. His success. The swiftness of which he works. How happy his fanbase is because they get to experience the stories and the characters. Yes, there are some who hate it or criticize it, but criticism and such is inevitable no matter how great you are. That's the curse of popularity. And our William Prose absolutely has a greater chance to lead to popularity. That brings us to the third point. Our William Prose allows for faster writing. Since you won't get caught up worrying about stuff like similes and metaphor and various lyrical stuff, you can focus on getting work done. This gives you more to showcase and, since there are less barriers to reading, there's more potential feedback. And with that feedback, you can keep growing and producing much faster. Yes, your prose will be less than some others, but the quantity you produce can help lead to greater quality as a writer in the long run. Keyword here, can. I'm not saying it will. I don't believe that quantity leads to quality. Quantity by itself doesn't work. Mindlessly writing without any concerns beyond size doesn't advance any skill set. But if you are creating and sharing a large quantity of things and learning from each of them, you're more likely to improve as a creator than someone who just analyzes and waits to be ready because they want to be great or avoid shame or whatever. Think of it this way. You can't control how people react. That's external. But you can control how much you make and this can help you make more. Besides, a William prose is all you need in the modern world. We live in a fast-paced world with tons of things competing for time. Less is more. The details on the page don't matter as much as the image readers imagine up anyway. This is why the majority of modern writers are minimalists. Readers don't need us to exhaust them with details or waste their time with stuff they don't need to know. So focusing on those skills early on would only serve as a distraction from the skills which should be being built. Remember though, I'm just arguing for this as a foundation. You don't have to be complacent in this style. I don't think you should due to the dangers of page prose. I'm simply arguing that this is a starting point, a foundation. You can build on it in all sorts of ways. Speaking from personal experience, I built on my approach with things like euphonics and rhetoric. I like what they do and I understand from a neuroscience position why they do what they do. It's just not stuff I feel everybody needs to worry about assuming they decide to worry about it at all. They're spices, not the main dish. Focus on the main dish, the story, first and foremost. Of course, these are all just my opinions at present, based on my observations, experience, and research. I could be wrong in my conclusions. Do you think that there's something I've overlooked? Or do you agree and wish for more people to consciously embrace this style as well? Give me your thoughts in the comments. And give me your likes. And subscribes and any of the other YouTube stuff if you want to support the channel and encourage more videos like this.